You say that you got joy. Laugh, show your teeth, smile more. Joy. So why would you go to a church like that? You hear the old saying or the old statement that says something like this, come as you are. That's fine. It's okay to come as someone who's struggling, who has different issues, things about the world that's still on them. I get that. But we're not to stay as we once were. We are to be changed. We are new creatures. Well, the problem comes in when no one is pushing you to change, to grow in the Lord. Particularly, it's bad when the pulpit doesn't want to, when the church doesn't want you to change. Particularly bad when the person in the pulpit is just as bad as what you see in the world. As a matter of fact, they emulate the world. Peter says, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. Because it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. The question is, is what we're seeing in many of today's pulpits, is that holy? <laughs> now, the guy with the gut who's sagging, I don't know if that's necessarily something that we ought to be emulating, the sagging part, not the gut part. I understand people have guts, but the sagging part, the part where if his shirt comes up a little bit, you can see his underwear. Uh, I don't know what he's wearing, what he's trying to emulate, but he seems to be a lot like the world. Aren't we trying to lead people away from the world? Whatever he's got going on, that just doesn't seem to be in keeping with what Peter says, being holy, even in our conduct. <laughs> You want to go to a church service where the people are reverencing the Lord and doing things that lead them to grow in the Lord. I don't know that this is the same thing as what I'm talking about. I don't know that this is has anything to do with the Lord. I'll be honest with you. I don't want to go to a church like that. And I definitely don't want to go to church like that. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure if there's anybody black in that church. I'm not even sure if that's a if that's a Protestant church or a Catholic church. But there's something funny about there's something similar. There's something reminiscent about these guys in their all white. I can't quite put my finger on what it reminds me of, but I just don't feel good about me as a black person being in that in that environment. Paul says that whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Look what he says. And give no offense either to Jews or to Greeks or to the church of God. Whatever you do, there should be no one leaving uh, offended. Now, there are going to be some that are going to be offended because of the gospel. That's going to happen. But I mean doing things, doing acts, doing actions, doing different shenanigans, acting a, a certain way, behaving a certain way that is going to cause people to be offended. That shouldn't be your goal. As a matter of fact, you want to try to avoid that. He says, why? Just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many. Why? So that many will be saved. Not to have them come and see me partying or dancing or what have you. I'm not saying that dancing is wrong, or whatever. But when you look like the world, when you behave like the world, when you move like the world, what is the world going to think when they see you mirroring, imitating them? John says, beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. And so what we do should look like not the world, but something different than the world. That's one of the, the definitions that you can actually apply to the word holy, separate, or the word different. We are not like them. They are not like us. We want them to come to be part of what we're doing, but we don't want to get them to come in just so that we can all be a different version of the world. Remember, Paul says this. He says, therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. Walk in love just as Christ also did. And so what we want to do is 
we want to imitate Christ. Because yeah. we're stirring up culture for the cause of That's Christ. Right. So I mean, this is this is Atlanta culture. It and is. What our, our, the assignment of our church, uh, Brad, <laughs> is to reclaim culture for That's the cause right. of Christ. Yes. Right. We can't let the devil have swag and surf. That's right. We can't let the devil have walk it out. How did he behave? He did not behave like the world. As a matter of fact, it was clear that when he showed up, he was different. He's not like us. And some folks did not like that, just like today. Some people will not like that. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe we've got pastors, we've got preachers, we've got Christians who don't want the world to not like them. The world is going to hate you. If you find yourself in a position to where the world doesn't have a problem with you, if you find yourself in a position, especially as a pastor, where the world thinks you're cool, well, where the world wants to bring you on for interviews, and they want to talk to you and they like your brand of Christianity, then you could rest assured that you and your brand of Christianity is not what Christianity is about. You can rest assured that you have conformed to this world and you can rest assured that you're probably not saved. Why? Because believers don't look like unbelievers. The, the world does not look like the church. Light does not look like darkness. And so if your church is full of these sorts of things, you might want to leave. Amen. Hey